Mortal Kine out here today. We're going to be diagnosing a misfire uh, on a on a 2003 and up Gen 3 Hemi 5.7 liter from Chrysler. Okay, um, it's a common problem on these cars. We're going to diagnose what the misfire can be and see if we can get it, the car running good. I'll show you how it runs right now. Okay, first thing, hook it up with the scanner. All right, this is a 2012 uh, Chrysler. All right, Dodge Ram, there is no real, Dodge is not a brand, it's just, it's a Chrysler, okay? I mean, they call it a Ram, people think Ram is a different company, it's all Chrysler. All right, just like Charger, Dodge, whatever else they, names they wanna use. Go into the control module, go into powertrain. Okay, read codes. Okay, it says cylinder three misfire. Okay, so, and this one's stored, and this one, this is a hard fault. Okay, now I have a video on how do you identify the cylinders, which cylinder is number one. You can check that video out. It's easy, it's self-explanatory, really fast to understand where all your cylinders are for diagnostic purposes. All right, guys? All right, so now we got number three, and we're going to check. The easiest thing to do is to check um, that, number, that cylinder, uh, the, the spark plug, the ignition coil, and take it from there. Okay, so the number three cylinder is on the driver's side. And disregard these numbers, because I switched the coils already. But anyhow, this is number three. This is one, this is three. Okay, you have a little clip, a little uh, connector here. You take that out. You have a 10 millimeter right here and a 10 millimeter back there. And this comes out. Now, these engines have two spark plugs per cylinder. So there's 16 uh, spark plugs in the whole eight cylinder engine and you know that can cause a lot of a lot of problems with misfires okay you take the coil out and you check the plugs now i check the plugs and this is what i got all right this one was in number three cylinder this one is all cruddy and carbon this one is nice and clean or both of them look no good Okay, it's supposed to be nice and white tan, a nice white electroid with a little bit of a tan, or a little bit of gray, but not wetness. This is all fuel, it's unburned. And over here, I don't know if this is an older spark plug because it's the same cylinder. They probably just replaced one, which is stupid, but uh, both of them are no good. It looks like they're not firing. Okay, so what I did is I took, I took the number, one coil, okay? Now, first of all, I put new spark plugs in there. Then I took the number one coil and put it on the number three and vice versa. I put the three on the, on the uh, one. That's why you see them like this. See, this is the number one coil that was over here. So I put it here with brand new spark plugs, okay? So now it's got a different coil and it's got brand new spark plugs. And I put the other coil um, over here with the, the, the spark plugs. I didn't even touch the spark plugs in this cylinder because number one, it's fine. Started it up, same exact problem, same code. So what does that tell you? That tells you right off the bat that the coil's good because it's still misfiring in number three. If it would have misfired to number one now, now we know it's the, it's the uh, coil. Make sense? Okay, it, it's not the spark plugs. Spark plugs are brand new. Okay, it's the coil. 
So it's not the coil because it's misfiring with brand new, brand new spark plugs and a completely different coil that was, the number one coil was fine on number one cylinder. Okay, so what does that mean? So now, that means we have to check, we, have, we know we have good spark in this cylinder and we have to take the, the spark plugs out and do a compression test. All right, you can check for power first. Uh, you get the schematic and you make sure you have power to go into the coil, okay? If you don't have an ohm meter or a scan tool, um, we're gonna check for compression. Well, you're gonna have to have a compression gauge. See, this, is, this stuff is gonna save you a lot of money, so you're gonna have to have a couple of, you know, tools in order to do this yourself to save a lot of money. Is it worth to save for five, six hundred dollars? Yes, all right? All right, so we're gonna take the spark plugs out now and we're gonna put a compression gauge in there. Okay, so I just pulled these out. These are brand new, soaking wet with gas, fuel. Not a good sign. That's telling me that there's, uh, there's uh, a combustion problem. That's probably mechanical. No. All right, so now we're gonna put, actually what I should do, I forgot, is, okay, anyway. When you do a compression test, obviously you leave one spark plug in, don't take both out because then you have no compression. All right. So I'm gonna put one back in again because I just made that mistake. All right. Okay, we're gonna give it a compression test now uh, and see what we got. Should be about 120 up. We got nothing on the gauge. Okay, so now, yes, the correct way would be you dis you disengage the fuel uh, pump and throttle wide open when you do this, but um, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna have zero regards. The engine was just it cranked over more times enough. It's only be supposed to be about three, three or four good revolutions. One, two, three, four, maybe five. And you should be at minimum 120. We got nothing. So that's telling me two things. That's either the valve is bent, the valve is burnt, um, or the piston has a hole, or something's going on in, in that cylinder. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, a look in there with a bore scope. All the fun stuff now. Okay. Uh, I got my uh, bore scope hooked up. Um, you can check out one of my videos on, on uh, how to purchase this. Um, okay, so now we're gonna look inside the cylinder. You're gonna use the, you're gonna watch the bore scope. All right. Now I'm gonna go in here and take a peek. I want to get you guys dizzy, but. Come on. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look inside. That's the piston. All right. So far, it looks okay. Nice and it's too clean, and it's all wet with uh, what's that? Anyway, try to spin it around. Around. What I'm looking for is any kind of chips on the piston, uh, any kind of like the valves hitting the piston. Um, and I don't see anything in this one. I'm gonna. S it's just very clean. So my guess is, um, see my my scope can't look at the valves. Um, let me see if I can just have an attachment. Okay, so I'm still taking a look at the piston. And I 
I think I think that's just a, to me it looks so usually if, if it's gonna break you're gonna see with a piston ring uh, seats in the uh, on the edge of the piston they usually chunks will be missing on the seams but this one it seems like the piston is fine now if that piston wasn't fine uh, oh, right now, as we speak, as soon as we had low compression, the head has to come off. There's no miracle fluids. You can watch my other video on how head gasket sealers don't work and things that there's no miracle in a can over here. Um, but if this piston was, was chipped or something like that, that means that the engine has to come out. Um, so this doesn't look like the engine has to come out, but the head has to come off. So... I don't have um, a way to look at the valves on this one. I used to have one. My other video shows me looking at the valve. This one, that one uh, is, isn't going in for service. But anyway, it probably has something to do with the valves or a lifter. Again, those are problems that are known on this engine. So at least the bottom end is fine. So the head has to come off. So a simple misfire turned into a serious uh, head replacement job. All right, so that's, that's the situation here. You wanna watch me how I take this engine apart. I'm gonna have a nice series on, on, on doing that. Stick around, please subscribe, hit the like button. Like I said, you're free to roam around. I got, a whole, I got over 200 videos, you know, save you a lot of money. All right, guys, Motocon out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.